Hey guys, in this video, I just wanted to cover a quick tutorial on how to use frame of motion to appear a navigation bar on scroll and disappear it when you scroll back up. This was a rebuild from a website named Diagram, which makes these really cool animations that are really cool and really simple to build in frame of motion. So let me know if you want to see those. But today we're just covering the navigation bar that happens on scroll. We're also going to be using Tailwind and CSS. So to start, you're going to want to go, so to start, go to the link in the description and go to the clean UI template if you want to follow along. If not, I'll have the final code in the main branch. You want to come here and get clone, go to your VS code or whatever. And here I'm just going to clone my repository, paste in, um, just select where you want to create it. So for this example, I'm just going to name my folder Galaxy YouTube. And then select as repository destination and open the window. Now you want to open a terminal here. Make sure you are in the folder here and then run npm install, which this should install all of the dependencies. Okay, so really quickly, just to walk through how this navigation bar is working. So we actually are exporting one function, which then depending on the rolling position of the window, we are rendering a different nav. Navigation. For example, when we're on the hero component, we just have the regular navigation bar. We have nav bar fixed, which is this. You can go ahead and take a look at the code if you want on your own time and maybe learn from how I designed it if you like. And then we have a navigation scroll, which appears whenever we scroll. So the way we're doing this is using state uh, to track if it's scrolling or not. We have a use effect and we add an event listener, the scroll, and then we call the function handle scroll. Here we check if the window scroll y is greater than the window inner height, which basically is just the inner height of the hero component. Then it's true, else it's false, and that's our state managing our different navigation parts. So we take a look here, we see this navigation bar appear and disappear. Right now it has no animations and it's also off-centered and I'll tell you why in a second. So using Framer Motion, we're going to import here. So we want the motion component from Framer Motion. So we're going to be animating navbar scroll. So to do this, all we have to do is give this navigation bar a motion tag. And here I'll, I have already provided you guys the variants and I'll walk through what these mean. So first, we're just going to define variants. These are going to be equal to our nav animation. We're going to set in an initial state, and this is going to be just called initial. If you haven't worked with frame of motion here, we're defining what the initial state of our element that we're trying to animate is. And here in my object of animations, we've defined an initial property an animate property and an exit property. Here, the initial state will be, is gonna be a Y of 50 pixels up, which is gonna be hidden. An X of 50%, this is what we're translating. Like I said here, the navigation bar appears to be skewed to the right, but actually this navigation bar is centered. We can take a look here, left 50%. However, the div is 50%, but it starts here and then it continues there. So if we want it to be in the center, we could always go here and we do negative translate. We do negative translate X one half. So as you can see, it's perfectly in the center. Now, the reason why we don't do this here is because frame or motion will render this component differently and this property will not be applied. And then our animation will just be skewed. So for this reason, we have to specify it inside of frame or motion. Here we just do X is negative 50% as well in the animate. So that doesn't change, but we have to specify it there. So if you run into an issue that your animations are not looking properly and you're translating them through either CSS or Tailwind, that's probably why. We're gonna get rid of that. We're actually gonna uncomment our variants. Here we're gonna define our animate state, which is just animate. I like to name mines the state they're, they're, they're called just because it's easier for me. And an exit property of exit. This will just be the exit animation that the component will have when it's unmounted. So here you just want to define these animations. Usually I would like to make a folder under utilities or a library, whatever. 
and just have a whole file of just animations and export them and then i'll import them up here but for the sake of this video having them at the bottom it's completely fine okay so now what we want to do here is we want to wrap our at nav bars in animate present this will allow animation to happen whenever the component is mounted and unmounted else if we don't have this here we won't see any animation because frame motion will not understand that it's being unmounted or mounted. For animate presence to work, you do have to specify a key and this could be whatever. If you have multiple children, you can always do their index, but here we just have one, so we can have one. And if we save that, take a look at the animation now. When we scroll, it has a really beautiful animation. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I know it was super simple, but stay tuned for the next video where I'll show you how to animate these planets just like in this website. For example, how they load in and appear. Thanks for watching. As always, the code will be in the description if you want the finished code or the follow along code. I encourage you to take a look at the code. If you have trouble recreating the UI, it's a great practice to just look at other people's code and learn from there. So thanks for watching.